Hi, my name is Erin. Um, I've been a steel detailer for over 15 years, and my primary uh, job as a steel detailer for the fabricator is to figure out every piece of steel we're going to have to build. And one of the functions that I do for them is create a 3D model. Um, our model is not an integrated model, but it is available for BIM projects. So when we bid a project, if we're aware that it's BIM, we know that my model is going to be shared. Um, if it's not BIM, I still model it. Um, it provides us with a lot of, uh, you know, we, we find a lot of design clashes and um, clearance issues and, and a lot of things that, you know, other presenters have talked about the benefits of BIM and, um, you know, just within our own material, we find these issues and try to prevent uh, uh, field issues. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here and show you one of my uh, models. And it's a lot more stripped down than the other BIM models because my primary uh, focus is the steel, including uh, uh, I do model the joist because I have to provide some information um, related to the joist. Um, but one of the things that uh, could really improve the quality um, is improved coordination. When I have to provide steel for um, uh, MEP, mechanical uh, units, rooftop units especially, I have to provide steel underneath those. And a lot of times the location is not uh, fully settled or the actual unit size is not um, finalized. And my steel has to be on site before that information is finalized. So that um, it's kind of putting the cart before the horse. I can't provide a frame for an item that we don't know uh, the size. So getting that, um, you know, utilizing BIM, we can get that coordination a lot quicker. Even if the project's not BIM, getting that information sorted out a lot sooner, I can incorporate it into my model for the project. And I have found um, clash issues and coordination issues for projects that don't have an integrated BIM model. Um, you know, and it provides a, a benefit to the, the, the quality of the steel product that we're providing. Um, we're not field cutting, we're not uh, modifying things, we're setting it, setting, sending it out and, you know, ready to be installed. Um, one of the other um, items that I provide is in my model is the joist information, but the joist is a separate, uh, separate entity provided by a separate supplier. And a lot of times their information um, isn't uh, isn't accessible. I know where it is and I know some basic information, but when I have a model with a lot of these joists and I have to provide steel right up to the joist, I need to know um, a lot more information about the joist. So getting other contractors on, uh, on the same page and understanding when they need to have that information or having that information a lot sooner um, really helps provide that quality project or you know, that, that quality that we're all striving for. Um, owners don't like it when they go out and they see their red steel. It's all uh, primered and looks beautiful. And then there's these pretty ugly field cuts and unnecessary field welds because there was a modification. You know, we have to go through the proper channels to get authorization to, to do these modifications. But a lot of times when, if I'm given information a lot sooner, I can have my shop do these and we can take care of these issues in the shop and send it out to the field. And the owner doesn't ever have to know we, you know, there was an issue and there was a major rework in this area we can uh, take care of it and send it out to the, the field um, with that, that quality look and actual quality um, product. That, that's actually a good point because uh, from my use of BIM, 
uh, we had uh, one of our owners in DTE, actual owner, was saying, how come you don't have so many non-conformance reports or quality incident reports? And we always tell them that because we take care of all these issues through our RFIs that come from our subcontractors because they're looking to their BIM models and try to do all that clash detections and all those issues that need to be resolved ahead of production. So we do these preventive and proactive measures in BIM by virtually visualizing what we're gonna produce ahead of production in the field. So that's a great point, thanks. Yeah, and preventing a lot of those issues on a new building has, um, you know, its own set of, uh, of issues. You know, we're bringing in a lot of new materials and new units. Existing and reworked buildings, there's a whole nother chapter of, uh, of existing conditions that uh, you need to, you know, we need to coordinate with. And, you know, when I'm thinking about how the, my erectors are going to build this and there's a 30 foot brick wall next to them, I need to provide my connections on a different side and I need to provide, um, you know, space for them to actually, actually be able to, um, to work and get their hands and their arms in there. So that 3D model allows me to be able to actually put a solid wall in there. So I visually see nobody can be on this side of the wall, you know, nothing can exist over here. So that 3D model can really, um, you know, help provide a timely uh, installation of steel and the, the quality um, uh, product. And one of the other um, things that I come across quite often is discrepancies between architectural drawings and structural drawings. So what I'm providing structure. Is, and so when I'm in the design documents, I live off from the 2D drawings that are produced and I am generally in the structural portion of the drawings, but quite often when I do have to dig through the architectural drawings for further information, I find discrepancies with edge conditions, grid lines, um, you know, the architect is telling me that I need to provide steel in an area that the engineer is not, is not telling me I need to provide steel. So there's a, a miscommunication going on with the design team. and. We, I find that when I'm putting my 3D model together and uh, you know, going back and forth between the architectural and structural drawings. So if they have that integrated model between them during the design phase, uh, most of that, those discrepancies are sorted out and worked out uh, before, you know, before I get involved or before sub other subcontractors are getting involved. Uh, when there's not an integrated model, um, or even a model at all, you know, the architect has his, uh, has his own model. Um, there's a lot more, I find a lot more discrepancies uh, that really causes uh, things to slow down. So, you know, we're all on a time crunch and every project is behind, behind schedule and over budget. So every time I have to stop and ask a question to clarify, is this grid four foot three or is this grid four foot two, it really slows down the, uh, the, the process that I'm going through. And those minor little discrepancies can really be smoothed out with an integrated model in the very beginning of every project. Um, and so Aaron, you, you are part of part of NAWIC as well. So can you tell us a little bit more about NAWIC? Because I'm really, uh, actually our March uh, uh, construction community panel was supposed to be on women in construction and we couldn't do that um, because of the coronavirus thing and we just had to cancel it. But I asked actually uh, Rita Brown to um, introduce a, a woman in construction that does BIM and she introduced, she introduced you as one of the um, pioneers in this field, actually with 20 years of experience. So how difficult is it to, to for uh, other women and girls to enter this market and maybe learn how to do BIM modeling and get into this portion of the construction industry if they're interested in, from your experience? It's definitely a lot different now than it was 20 years I was entering the, the market. Uh, 
exposure is key. So, you know, when I was a little girl, you didn't see other, you didn't see women in the construction industry and you didn't see this behind the scenes function uh, that goes on in construction. You know, even today, if you, you know, you ask my 14 year old son, he knows what I do because I tell him, but if, you know, just off the cuff, he wouldn't think of CAD operator as part of, uh, um, you know, construction trades. You know, he, he would think laborer, uh, brick mason, you know, so getting the exposure of BIM modeling and CAD operation, um, you know, in front of young girls and getting them interested in it early. Um, which I was fortunate to have a great uh, drafting program in high school. And, but even my drafting teacher didn't know what steel detailing was and was limited on his uh, knowledge and expert, you know, that's, that's an interesting uh, point because uh, I started as a drafts person in high school, actually, and then I went to civil engineering and construction. So nowadays, if a young person wants to enter this uh, market, they should start with, instead of drafting, they should start with CAD and BIM, I guess, and then they enter to those fields. So that's, that's actually another portion uh, of our discussion, hopefully, is uh, I know Wayne State is presenting classes for BIM and AGC also pre uh, has classes uh, for BIM. Did you attend any of these programs like through school or was it like uh, one of these associations or did you learn it by yourself? How did you get into this? Um, I did, I learned on the job. Uh, so through Maywick in uh, high school, they have a drafting competition and I entered the drafting competition and was one of the local winners uh, that year. And so I was introduced to many members in Maywick and I started collecting business cards because I needed a job. You know, I was gradu graduating high school and so I, I need something. Um, and I got hired by a steel fabricator. He happened to um, um, be a judge of the drafting competition. And, you know, seeing and acknowledge that, uh, you know, drafting skills are, uh, you know, are in big demand in uh, construction. And so I got to, you know, that he brought me good. in yeah. at, the, mm -hmm. at the bottom. So I did uh, field measuring. I got to go out on the job site and really get some invaluable uh, experience and knowledge um, on the job site. Uh, and then we just went from there and learning the 3D program, which is SDS2 that they utilize. And um, yeah, I've just been training on the job every day for, for a couple decades now.